Hello, lovely dilutionists. Come into my studio. Come on in, have a seat. I'm afraid the armchair is taken because Mr. Boo's in there at the moment. Sorry. Just squeezing around him, okay? Kettle's just boiled. Hmm. So, now I've got a little bit of time on my hands. I thought I would do a little video about storage, my paint storage. A lot of people ask about my paint storage. And while I'm doing storage, I thought I'd do a little colour theory as well, Dilusions colour theory, um, how I work with my colours. Um, so I thought I'd just do a little video about that. So, oops, sorry, it's been falling off the end. So come in close and see. So a lot of people comment about my paint store. Oh, just sorry, just knocked one over. And I was trying to work out the best way to do this. I'm going to talk to you facing the camera and then I'm going to turn the camera round. Sorry about that, that just fell off. Um, <clears throat> this is what I use as my paint storage and I absolutely love them. So just before the pandemic started was the last time I was at scrapbook.com, okay? Um, in, um, are they Arizona? They're that way. I can't remember. I, sorry, I always get transported. I don't know. And uh, I was doing lots of videos and they gifted me these fabulous holders. Okay. So I've had them for sort of a long time and they actually stack. It's probably easier. So you can put that and then you can stack them. So I have them stacked up. I usually have them stacked up on the back here. See, there's a gap. Can you see that gap there by the fridge? That's where they're all stacked. Okay, they all go there. Um, I usually have them too high, two stories high like that. But my shimmers, which go right against the fridge, I actually have three stories high because I know they're not going to fall because they're on the fridge. But they come like this. And it's as though they were tailor-made for my bottles. Look, they're just perfect. Because my bottles obviously sit this way up. So they're just perfect for these bottles. Now, I know there's lots of other brands that'll fit in. I'm not sure what, but there's lots of other brands. They also do a smaller one, I think, for like a Stickles or something like that. But they just fit in there like that. I'm a real neat freak. I like everything in storage. I like everything tidy, but I do like to be able to see it as well. So I have all my labels going forward. So they just fit in there. And then this fits over the top. So in America, when I sort of travelled in America, I would just stack these into a box and I would take them with me. But um, when I'm here, what I actually do is, have I got any around? When I'm working on my desk and I don't like things rolling around, I put my um, blending tools in here. Oops. So I usually have them all stood up. I have them all stood up like this with the different colours that I'm using. So I actually use the lid as well, okay? I'll just put those out of the way. Um, I use the lid when it's on the desk. And because I work in the colours, I just pull off whichever one of these that I'm wanting to work with, I just pull it off. But if you've got too many paints, you can also put your paints in here like this as well. So if I'm just wanting specific colours, do you see what I mean? You can pull them out and you can use this as storage. I think this is the best storage ever. Now, I've had these for a while, but I only had three of them. And I was doing something with scrapbook.com and I just happened to mention, I said, you know, it's a shame that I'm not in America anymore because I really want to get more of these... Um, Oops, sorry, that's not sitting on. There we go. I really want to get more of these stands for my paints. And they said, we were shit worldwide. And they gifted me some. So they sent me a lot more. So now I have, where's the shimmers? Let me put the shimmers back on that one. And then you can see, hang on, let me pull them across. <laughs> sorry, I don't usually have them all out. They're usually just all stacked up there patiently. Let me see if you can see. There you go. Can you see? So up there by the fridge, I have three sets of two and I have one set of three. The set of three is all my shimmers. This is all my warm paints, which I'm going to go through with you in a minute. These are all my, actually, if I turn it, I'm not used to having them all down. So you can see they're all my shimmers. 
okay all my shimmer paints we've got them in cools we've got them in warms and we've got the extras up the top so that goes right next to the fridge then the next one that i have is all my cocktail paints now my cocktails are also in here because i use them with every other paint but sometimes i just want to use them on their own so i have all my cocktail paints here and then i have the sin bin colors i have the two purples and i have blacks and white okay so i have those and then i have all my warm colors which i'm going to talk about in a minute so on the bottom row i have all the yellows and oranges and on the top row I have all the pinks and reds, okay? And then um, all my cool colours. So on the bottom row, I have all the yellows and greens. Top row is blues, apart from this one, which is actually one of the um, greens. So polished jade is one of the greens. So all my cools are in here and I work in colour families, which I will talk about in a minute. So apart from this green at the end, in cool colours, there's two colour families. There's the blues, which are all these colours here. So that is, Balmy Night is a neutral, but it's got a bluey tinge, so you could use it with that. So I've got Balmy Night, I've got Periwinkle Blue, Vibrant Turquoise, Blue Lagoon, Calypso Teal, London Blue, Blue Hawaiian, and ignore the one on the end. So those are my cools. Okay, uh, that's my, my blue family in the cools. Then I have a green family in the cool, which includes yellow. So you can he see here at this end, I've got lemon drop, I've got lemon zest, mushy peas, fresh, fresh lime, sour apple teeny, cut grass, uh, island parrot, dirty martini, and this one here, polished jade. Okay, so two families in my cools. I have blues and I have greens. That's what I work with. Then in my warms, I have two colour families as well. So let me just take those down. I have what I call the orange family. Okay, so I have vanilla custard, which again, it can be a neutral, but I've popped it in here. Desert sand, pure sunshine, uh, mango punch, squeezed orange, strawberry decorate, tangerine dream and fiery sunset. So they are the orange family in the warms and then I have the reds, the pink and reds, okay? So we've got rose quartz, peony blush, bubblegum pink, tropical sangria, funky fuchsia, pink flamingo, postbox red and cherry pie. All right, so that is how I do my colour families and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, colour theory. And so I'm going to flip, I'm going to flip the camera around. Okay. Okay. So in Dilusions World, um, this is what I do. You can do whatever you want. You can do anything at all, but this is what I do. And a lot of people ask what I do. I always go for the easy option um, so that I don't have to think. So here we go with the warm. This is the warm paints in my collection okay the reason i call these the warms are they you can probably see them from the top actually you can probably see the colors better from there there we go the reason i call them the warms is they remind me of warmth so the sun colors the fire colors you know if you think of a crackling fire you see these colors in pink is a uh, part of a red okay also browns would be in here as well so if you've got any of my old paints if you've got the melted chocolate if you've got the ground coffee they would be included in the warm so um orange would include browns and it would include yellows okay and then any variation of red or pinks now if you use all of these warm colors any of these warm colors together it will look beautiful so you don't have to stick to this or this you could use one from here one from here one from here whatever you choose from this selection and brown it's going to look amazing because they're all warm colours and all warm colours go together. So I don't think to myself before I start something, oh, should I use this? And I wonder if it'll go with this and will it maybe go with this? I just pick them out. And it's exactly the same with the inks as well. OK, you have paints are more forgiving than inks are, just to let you know that. Um, but that's what I do. I just pick them up and just use them. 
okay so it doesn't really matter i don't think to myself should i use this should i use that obviously if i'm wanting it to be more coordinated i could use three from the orange or i could use three from the pink and red but mainly uh, these are my warms and if i am doing a background i'll pick three colors sometimes i do cool sometimes i do warm sometimes i do cool i tend to mix but i always pick three colors okay then these are the cools, okay? And again, the reason I call them cools is they remind me of the sea, okay? So all these colours you would find in the sea, and the sea is cold and cool, isn't it? So that's my di difference, really, between warm and cool, okay? These are the warm colours, these are the cool colours. Um, and again, if I'm using them, I can pick anything, Blue and yellow make green. That's why the yellows are in here. Okay, so blue and yellow make green. It just works like that. I've got the Barmy Nights in here, but that could also go in the neutrals as well. So again, I could use this and this and this, or I could use this and this and this, or I could use this, this, this. What It doesn't matter what you use as long as you stick in this family. So whenever I am doing backgrounds in the journal, 90% of the time, my page will either have a background that's cool or it'll have a background that's warm, okay? So then when you come to put your focal point points on the top, so when you come to do your stamping or your collage or whatever it is you're putting on the top, if your background is warm, if your focal points are warm, you will have a lovely coordinated page. If your background is warm, you can do your focal points cool and they will really pop. It will really stand out and vice versa. This could be a background if you want it to be quite coordinated. You could pick any of these colours for your focal points. If you want it to pop, this could be a background and you could use warm um, focal points on the top. OK, you don't mix these. I would not use one of these, one of these, one of these. I wouldn't do that at all. I have the warm and cool. And then we have this set here. OK, which again, I've got I've got extra blacks in here, but um, Barmy Nights could be in here. So I have black and white. Black and white are not colours. They are total extremes. White has absolutely no colour in whatsoever and has to be man-made. And black has every colour in there. OK, so these are your neutrals. You can use these two with any of the cools oh, they're still in, yeah, or any of the warms. You can do that. But I tend to use them separately. I tend to just use these and then I use these as highlights, as shading, as extra bits on the top. OK, so that's your black and white. If you want a paler shade of one of my colours, you can mix a bit of white in, right? And what you do is you take some, you take a blob of white and a tiny bit of a colour and you'll get a pastel. If you want a deeper shade you can um, add a tiny bit of black because we don't do the deeper shades anymore. But this time you would take a blob of your colour and a tiny bit of the black. So if you're going darker, it's a tiny bit of black, a lot of colour. If you're going lighter, it's a lot of white, a tiny bit of colour. OK, and then in here, we also have the sin bin colours. So they sit here in the sin bin. OK. And these are the two purples and they're absolutely gorgeous. We have crushed grape and we have laid back lilac. And I only use these colours in a particular way. So let me show you. If I use them, if I bring them with the cools, OK, if I mix anything green, including polished jade, I will just get brown. This will not mix at all. But if I use blues, any of these blues with the purples will look fantastic and you can either use two purples one blue two blues one purple it doesn't really matter so nothing in the green including polished jade anything in the blue will work okay and then with the warms if i bring the warms over what purple will not go with anything in the yellow and orange it will just make brown OK, if you put these together, you're just going to get a muddy brown, but it will go beautifully with anything in the pinky reds. 
all right so any of these colors again you could have two you could have a pink you could have a red you could have a purple you could have two purples with a pink two purples with a red it will always go it just goes beautifully together okay so even if you haven't got these stands if you've ever seen me teaching i usually have little baskets and i have the the red family in one i have the pink family orange family in one so i split them up like that now red and blue or pink and blue make purple so this is the only color you can use to cross cools and warms so you can use a cool blue a warm pink or red and a purple because these two make purple okay so you could use a combination of any of these not this green at this end but a combination of any of these would work and that's the only way i use the purples or i just use the purples on their own or i could add a gray in but we don't have gray anymore so i could add like a white in like that or i could add a little bit of the barminites okay so you have to be really careful with these and the problem with these is when i see people in the shop buying people go oh purple i love purple oh look the yellow looks great with it i'm gonna get a yellow and then oh i'm gonna get um a blue OK, these two are opposite colours and that's why they look good next to each other. They don't look good mixed together. They just make brown. OK, opposite colours on the colour wheel. The colour wheel is like this. Let me show you the colour wheel, actually. Let me just smooth these out of the way. way. So the colour wheel starts... Let's start it at the top with the yellow. I don't know if I'm going to get all these in. We'll start it at the top with the yellow. Are we still in? Yeah. And let's go. Like this. It's ish like this. So it starts at the top with yellow and you can go either way. OK, so you can come down into the greens, the green lead into the blues, the blues lead into the pink and reds, which lead into the oranges, which lead back up into the yellows. Or you can go this way. OK, and anything that is um, next to each other like this, you could use. So I could use these two colours from the warm and these two yellows here because they're touching. So these would look fabulous together these again we've got the blues and pinks do you see what i mean so you can do that but you can't do opposites so if you look at the blues here i'm hoping these are, are these all in yeah you look at the blues here opposite are the oranges they look fabulous next to each other but if you mix these up they will make brown okay greens opposite the greens are the reds and the pinks brilliant think of christmas red and green looks amazing but if you mix these two, oh, sorry, the purple. The purple is down here. Here we go. If you mix um, reds and greens up, you're just going to get brown. Same with the purples. The purples are opposite the yellows. So um, anything in this family, you're going to get brown. Anything in this family, you're going to get brown. Do you see what I mean? So they belong in the colour wheel like this because these all go together. But I separate them. And I put them in their own little sin bin and only this bottom half of the colour wheel will work with them. As I've said before, you do you. You can do whatever you want. But people ask me all the time, how come your backgrounds always, always work? How come, you know, how come it always sort of works in there? Let me get a little journal out and then I can show you. So I'm just going to separate this off here. Oh, this is Christmas, so it might not be as obvious. Actually, that's not going to work because Christmas, I've only gone with two colour schemes. So let me get... Oh, I can't find a journal. Here we go. There we go. Oh, I have a feeling this is Christmas as well. <laughs> so I've got warms, warms, warms. This isn't going to work. Here we've got the purples in with the blues. I've got the cool background. This book isn't going to work. Let me find it. Oh, this one might work. Here we go. So I've got warms in the background here 
and I've added cools as the decoration because these are standing off can you see so um if I'd have used these colors for this it would have been more coordinated if you look here I've got warms in the background and I've got warms on top I've got a cool background here with purples warm background cool background cool background black warm background uh, hang on warm background warm background cool background can you see this is what i do i don't mix them cools cool warm warm cool warm that's actually warm on a black um cool you can see some mix but I, you never see these are cool you never see a red or a pink in here unless i'm doing a deliberate thing here we've got the yellows from the warms and because i wanted it to pop we've got the opposites we've got the cools around the edge so you can see how slightly different in this book because um Again, there's a lot of Christmas and I've picked the wrong book, but you can see. So that's how I work with it. See, so the Christmas, I have got two colour schemes in the Christmas because last year the collage sheets were, were traditional. So I use reds and greens. This year, the collage sheets are quite modern. So I've used pinks and um, pinks and turquoises. So you can see here, we've got the traditional and the model, modern. But again, if you look, the background is only in cools or warms. This is warms, this is cools. This is an exception, but the, because I've got this a lot black, the background is blue and I've done pink as the opposites because I wanted it to stand out. We've got warms, um, cools, cools warms cools you can see that is all i do here we've added the purples in so here i've got purple pink and blue so like just like i said before warms cools cools warms you can see i don't do anything except what i say and it always works so green background green and red make brown but red accents really pop really really pop look here look at the baubles these blue baubles popping here because the background is these yellow oranges yellow and orange are opposite so it's going to pop and that's how um how things work okay so this is an exception because this is a focal point on its own so i've used two well emmy did this two pinks and a blue but remember pink and blue make purple so you can have those shades together and to tie it all in she's just used white all over the top so that is how you use an exception again here i've got the blues and the purples in together blue and pink make purple okay so um <clears throat> that's it they're going to go back up on the shelf as i say these two go together these two stack like that on top of each other these two stack like that on top of each other um and then i have this stack of two so i have my black my white and my purples okay and then i also have my cocktails now the reason i have cocktails separate as well as in so for example if you look in here you will see blue hawaiian so my cocktails are paints are all fitted in and the reason i call the cocktail paints is because they are actually transparent all right so these work differently to the other paints so sometimes i just want to work with these colors I don't know why I've got extra of these in. So sometimes I'll just work with these three warm cocktail paints and these three cool cocktail paints. So I have them separate. If I just want to do something really bright and in your face, I'll just pull this set out. But I also have them mixed in with my others um, because I use them every day with them as well. So they those two go together. And then I have a big set of three shimmers, as I've told you, which is sat up there. Um, and they just sit like this. And I can see from the edge and I just slide them out. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip the camera around again. So hopefully now you can see them in their natural, oh, that way, natural habitat. You can see the tallest one, the three that has the shimmers 
In front of that, I have the cocktails and um, the purples and the neutrals. And then in front of that, I have the blues. And in front of that, I have uh, the cools. And then I have the warms. So that is where they live. So when I'm doing something, I can just go like that. I can just pull a set down to use and I can just slide back and put them back up because I don't like to get out of my chair. I just like to slide around. Um, if you know me at all, anything anything in these cupboards is what I reach for all the time. So, for example, this has all my journals in, the ones that I'm working on at the time. This one has all my paint pens, all in order, all in size. I'm very, very anal. This one has all my other pens in there and it has all my stamps. Down there is all my diary. Behind me down here is all my dialogue and my fountain pens. Down here, oh, also in here, sorry, um, stamps. Down here I have um, collage. So everything I need is within, I have a little trolley here, which has my everyday stuff on. I have a trolley here which has all, you know, so I like everything around. So I like to be able to just reach back and get them out. The inks, I don't use the inks as often because when I use ink, I do tons, okay? Because ink, you need to clean up a lot more. So I um, do a massive session of inks. So they're in one of the cupboards over there, okay? But these, I quite often will just pick, pull them off. So... Another thing that I just want to show you that um, scrapbook.com sent me. They're so lovely. I am doing something with them. But uh, Emmy will put the links up above for these two things. They also sent me some storage. I don't know what it's called. Emmy will find it. They sent me some of these storage boxes, which come in lots and lots of different configurations. Okay. Um, but they know my dialogue is this size and fits perfectly in here so they sent me some of these now as you know my dialogues when i'm working on them i have things in the this is my one that i carry all the time i always have it in a cover okay when i finished my dialogues oh i've got a big spinny thing over there and all the finished dialogues are in covers over there so all the ones with all my quotes all the day by dies they're all over there and they're all in covers but i have a lot of dialogues that i'm working on that i don't actually carry around this is the one i carry around but i have lots of other dialogues started etc that i'm working on and this is just perfect for them so i'm just going to show you it first and it's it's like a board. I, I thought it was wood at first, but it's a board. And then inside it has these, I'm not sure if they'll come out. Yeah, so it has like these. So if you want everything to be the same height, for example, if I put one in the front, one in there and one in the back, if you want everything to be the same height, you can keep these out. But if you want them to be higher, you take this and you, sorry, this is a bit difficult, isn't it? You take this and you pop it in and you let it drop. And then you've got a tier. So can you see? They can be higher. So you can have these tiered down. They're different sizes. If you want in everything in here the same size, you can use these as little storage boxes. I am terrible for storage boxes. In front of me, I have a little IKEA table thing and it has a drawer that you pull out. It's what my microphone and everything sits on. I have a drawer that pull out and if you open it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little boxes. Look. I have pens in that one. I have, oh, cartridges in another one. My tablets in another one. I just love, what's up with that? I just love boxes. I've got batteries in one. So I have loads and loads of these. So if you want them flat. Now, in my drawers behind me here, in my cupboard here, I have them flat so that they will fit in the shelves. But this one that's up on my desk, I actually have them on the tiers okay so you just drop them in Whoop. you 
see. And then you pop your books in. I'll go through some of these books for you. So this sits up top on my desk, but like so. Can you see? The one in the cupboard. So in here, they all sit level, okay, because they fit the shelf. My shelf is like, um, I don't know, half a centimetre, quarter of an inch higher than these boxes. So behind me here, I have all these. And you might say to yourself, but Diane, why do you have so many on the go? Because when I used to teach, Every time I taught, I had, to, I had to open a new one, open a new one all the time. Every time I do a release or do a demo, I have to open a new one. So I have all these, sorry, I'm just putting some tape on the mat, it's coming up. I have all these unfinished ones and I don't want to lose sight of the fact that they're unfinished. I want to finish them. So now if I'm doing something for me, I don't go get a new dialogue. I go into one of these and I pull out what's there. So in this one here, let me go through, let me tip it down a little bit. There we go. So at the back here, I've actually got blank ones because I took this to the cottage with me as well. So I had extra blank ones at the back. So I've got a black one, I've got a craft one, I've got handwriting one, um, and then I've got a couple of the background ones because I, you'll see as I go nearer the front, you'll see that I do quotes in them. So those were my extras. I always take extra because you never know. I might be stuck there for months. Something might happen and I might be stuck there for months. So I always have to have extra with me. Okay. Then in this section here, you can see this is why I have um, lots of the ready decorated ones because I put quotes in them. OK, so this is actually waiting to go into um, a cover because that's finished. OK, again, this is not finished. Oh, I might have finished it now. Have I finished it? Oh, I finished it. So that can go in a cover as well. Again, all quotes that can go in a cover so they can come out. I've got a new handwriting one there that can go at the back. Um, that is a really old quote book. And then I've got books like this, which I've got little bits in that I don't want to lose sight of okay and then I have my ink swatches so that's always up the top where I can see where it is that's all the swatches for my uh, fountain pens and then here I have a Christmas dialogue that I am working on that is almost finished so I think it's just got a couple of pages at the back just a couple of pages at the back to do and everything oh oh there was one in the middle there oh how oh, 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 oh. so there's one in the middle okay so that's nearly finished so nearly finished things sit in here and here is a normal um dialogue that's nearly finished when when they're nearly finished I don't want to carry them around with me because they're really heavy. Look, I've got to finish doing that. I've got that page. So they're on my desk and I work on them on my desk. OK, so this one sits out. I, I have my desk here and then I have a slightly higher desk next to me. I like my desk to be clear. So this sits up on here. It actually sits next to the kettle. Would you believe it sits up there? And I am really impressed with those storage boxes. Very, very impressed. So they stay in those until they go into these over there. All my finished books, and they're all sort of in order. I'll go through them one day. Um, they're all over there. And this is the one I carry around every day. Okay. And an example of them all being in order would be, I have some writing ones under here. So these are full. These are finished. But these are all quotes. Can you see? They're all quotes. And I keep them in a binder. So all my lots, well, lots of my quote ones are behind me. 
because when I'm working, I just want to pull one out and I just want to use some of the quotes. But all my calendar ones are all together, all my day by dies are all together in one of the, in, well, in lots of these. All my um, maybe black ones will all be in a cover. All my, do you see what I mean? I just keep them over there because um, my covers get battered or they used to get battered when I was on the road all the time. They always got battered because I always had them on aeroplanes and things like that. So I use the old colours because they're reasonably priced. I use the old covers to um, to store all my ready done ones in. And um, these just used to be sort of, I don't know, in boxes or... I used to have like these Ikea boxes, um, but they gifted me a load of these. I think they sent me five of them and I've used them all. I've used them all. I need some more. But I think they do them in, um, have a look anyway, they do them in all kinds of different ones. Um, I do have a, we do have a link for scrapduck.com. I have become one of their affiliates. I'm really bad at doing anything like that. But most of you know I've had these years I've had these paint things years and I've always used them and I've always recommended them so go and have a look and um see so I hope you enjoyed that a little bit of storage a little bit of color theory inks is exactly the same the color theory is exactly the same except you have to just be really diligent that you don't cross warms and cools because you will end up with a brown mess and people say to me all the time well I like brown well, fine, just buy brown. You do, just buy brown and use brown. There's nothing wrong with brown. I use brown with reds. I use it with pinks. I use it with the yellow and oranges. But I wouldn't use it with anything cool. You put brown with anything cool and you're just going to get mud. Okay? So um, you can be more forgiving with paints than you can with inks. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay. Bye.